Hi, I'm Mr. Miller, and this is a lesson on transformations of sinusoidal functions. So here is the first example. We want to graph y equals 2 sine in brackets x plus pi over 3 minus 1 on the interval from negative pi over 3 up to 2 pi using transformations on sine x. So you can tell it's been vertically stretched by a factor of 2, and then it's been shifted down 1. And there's also a horizontal translation of pi over 3 to the left. So let's take a look at what that's going to look like on the grid. So I label the x and y axes, and I also put a scale on there. And I mark off the vertical displacement of down one unit, because normally there is a a central horizontal line, which is the x-axis, which the sine function would go above and below. And that has been moved down one unit. So it's good to have that as a reference. It's kind of like the calm watermark. And so next thing I do is I use the fact that the amplitude is 2 to go 2 above that y equals negative 1 line, and I go 2 below it and I make two more dotted lines. Now notice that these are dotted or dashed lines just to indicate they are guiding lines to help me draw the graph. They're not actually part of the graph. So from here, um, I recognize that since there is a shift to the left pi over three, normally si sine would start at zero, zero. Of course, we've been shifted down one unit, and we're also to the left pi over 3. So that's why I'm starting here at this point. And now I know that this is going to have a period of 2 pi, so I can complete one cycle going from here to just pi over 3 to the left of 2 pi. And that will complete one cycle, and I'm going to have a little bit more afterwards. So I can connect all these points together, and I can even plot a few extra points to get what the shape will look like afterwards. Now let's talk about these different things like domain, range, amplitude, period, y-intercept, phase shift, which is the horizontal shift, and also the vertical displacement with respect to y equals sine x. So for the domain, it's x can be any real number. You can use anything as input as x. The range, you'll notice that y is also a real number, but it is between negative 3 and positive 1. The amplitude of this function is 2. And the period of this function is 2 pi. The y-intercept is what you get when you substitute in x equals 0 into the equation. And so if you evaluate this, notice that using x equals 0, 0 plus pi over 3, if I take the sine of pi over 3 and multiply by 2, I would get root 3, and then taking away 1 from that, so it's root 3 minus 1. Uh, that's the y value. So 0, neg uh, zero root 3 minus 1. And root 3 is about 1.7, so take away 1, that's about 0 0.7, so that's where we're crossing the y-axis. And finally, the phase shift. So this is the horizontal shift. So it's pi over 3 to the left, so we say it's negative pi over 3. And finally, the vertical displacement. So this is down one unit, so it's negative 1. And that completes the first example. Let's take a look at example number 2. So it says to graph y equals negative 3 cosine pi of x minus a third plus 2 on the interval from 0 up to 2 using transformations on the graph of y equals cos pi x. Um, so I, first of all, label the x and y axes, and I make a scale that's appropriate. And now let's talk about these different pieces. So first of all, the fact that there's a plus 2 on the end means that that is the vertical displacement. So it's up two units from there. 
And now we also have an amplitude of three, so we can go three above and three below that line y equals two to find out exactly how high and how low this function will go. And we've got a minus one third. So that means there's a phase shift or a horizontal shift to the right by one third. And now, Let's think about this. Cosine pi x. So if I were doing cosine x, normally that would start at 1 and go down to negative 1 and then back up to positive 1. So when it starts at 0, 1. Now, obviously, that's been shifted up, and we've got a vertical stretch by a factor of 3. But it's a negative 3, so actually cosine would normally start at the minimum y value in that case. But that has also been shifted to the right by one third. So that's why, why I've got this point here, which is the first point I'm going to use on the graph. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the fact that this is the B value is pi, which means the period is 2 pi divided by pi, which is 2. So I've got a period of 2. You notice that if I do 1 third plus 2, it takes me here to complete the cycle. And then I can do all my other points in between based on that. So halfway through the cycle, and I'm at the maximum. Halfway between the minimum and the maximum, I'm at the middle y value. And uh, 2 thirds of the way from this minimum to this middle y value, I'll be at this point here. So now if I connect these points together with a nice smooth curve, put arrows on the ends to indicate that the relation does continue on from here, the function does continue on from here, and that gives me a picture of what this looks like. Now next we want to talk about all these features. So domain x is any real number, you can take any x value, subtract a third, multiply by pi, take its cosine, uh, multiply by negative 3 and add 2 and you get a valid y value. For the range, y is any real number, but of course it's between negative 1 and positive 5. The amplitude of this function is 3. And the period is 2. The y-intercept is what you get for y when x equals 0. Now, it happens to be right bang on a grid point, so it's a half. But of course, you can get this by doing 0 take away a third, multiplying that by pi, a third pi. So pi over 3, you take the cosine of that, multiply by negative 3, and add 2, and you would find you get 0 0.5, or 1 half for the y-value. The x-intercepts, there isn't a way to get that algebraically at this point without doing a whole lot of work. So graphically, we can say it's approximately at these two places. Of course, the other thing that we can do is we can use some graphing software to um, figure out what that would be. So for instance, I can use the Desmos calculator, and I can put in y equals, and it's negative 3 times the cosine, just make that a little bit bigger here, of uh, pi times x minus 1 third. Oopsies, did x instead of pi. Uh, pi times x minus 1 third. Now, if I close the brackets around that, and it was plus 2, I believe. So now we don't need to look at all of this right now. We only need to look at x going from uh, like negative 1 up to 3, even. That's more than we need. And y, I'll maybe restrict it to going from like negative 3 up to maybe seven, and then uh, that allows me to focus in on this particular part of the graph. 
Okay, so two zeros. So here's one of them, 0 0.07 approximately, and this one, 0 0.60. So, and you can certainly figure out what those points are just by setting this equation with a y equal to zero and solving that equation. Um, so that would be a little bit of a lengthy process, but you could certainly get those two x values in that way. All right. So next, here is a sinusoidal graph that's been given to us. And now we have to figure out what are the coefficients, the A, the B, the C, and the D. So here's what I would do. So I'm going to write it as a cosine graph. You could alternatively do it as a sine graph, but let's say I do it as a cosine graph. Then first of all, I'm identifying that middle y value, which is positive 0.5. So I'm going to put a plus 0.5 on the end of the equation. I can see that the amplitude is 1.5. So I put that out in front. I can see that the period is 12. So I can write the b value as 2 pi over 12, which you can leave like that if you want it standardized, or you can simplify it to pi over 6 if you really want. And finally, minus 1. So I know that a positive cosine would normally start at its maximum, and that's 1 to the right. And so that's why I'm replacing the x with an x minus 1. So again, you can simplify that b value if you want, or just leave it in the original standardized form. So that completes this lesson on transformations of sinusoidal functions. Hope you understood that pretty well, and thanks for watching. Have a great day.